Yeah, so that way we'll be in the video. So it's good now? Yeah, it should be good. Okay. So today I'll go to um, really briefly on what's the main steps to um, complete the analysis for this buffering lab. And I will do one example for the long aluminum case just to get a sense on how should it be done for the rest of the cases because they're pretty much the same. So first step, as you know that we, for our lab, we only use one boundary condition. So it's a fix, fix boundary condition. Okay. Just gonna draw a parallel real quick. This is unsupported. Um, all right, and then that gives us quickly critical stress pi squared e equation two point six in the handout, and k is zero point five. For a fix, fix boundary condition. So the other equation that we'll be interested in finding is the transition as uh, the slenderless transition, where it distinguish where the uh, column <coughs> with the specific dimension we're testing is going to yield if it's less than the transition s, and if it's above it it's predicted to be uh, to buckle. So there's actually two ways to uh, identify if the, to or predict the type of failure that we're expecting. So that equation for ST or transition synthesis is pi over k. The same k is this. E is young modulus, sigma y is the yield strength. So these two are just material constant. This is equation 2.7. Okay. So essentially, if I plot, if you look at equation 1, sigma critical, assuming that we um, analyzing just one material with one boundary condition, and we vary the S, just like what we're doing in this lab, because we vary the dimension. Same area, but we, we vary the length, so it, it's going to change the S. Because S here is the unsupported length divided by the radius of gyration, and radius of gyration is just square root I over A. Okay. So you can see that S is proportional to length. And and also sigma i of a proportional to the square root of a once you put it in. Okay. So basically increasing the length and increasing the um, increasing the length will increase our s. So let me plot this first. So sigma critical is a function of s. So standardless doesn't have a unit, so it's it's a normalized value, so it doesn't have a unit. So this here is STR because STR is found by assuming sigma critical is the yield strength. So that means here is actually sigma yield of the material. And the shape or the function of this is equation 1 basically which is a function of s but the moment that sigma critical um, is equal to yield strength that's where we predict it to saturate so this is yielding 
and this is both one. So for all the labs, since we can't vary the length, we end up like three different s, right? When we do the computation. So what you get is, um, let's say I denote s l as the long s, the the long the long specimen, and then s medium is the medium length. And I, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna say, s short is somewhere there, but you, you have to do the calculation to figure out is it on the left side or the right side of str. Okay, so essentially, like you mean this point here. So the x point is theoretical, theoretical. Sigma critical. So I'm just doing a legend there. That's true. And from your raw data, um, it was given from the raw measurement. Okay. You're measuring two things the load and the extension. And you get something like this, right? So this is the max load. I just say P max. And then we can get sigma max as P max over the area cross section of the specimen. Okay. And then let's say I do it for every case for long case, the medium case, and the short case. And I'm gonna plot it, superimpose it on the same uh, theoretical uh, plot. And let's say it's somewhere there, there, and there. Oh, sorry. But they're the same um, x, x value, okay? So this is uh, experiment. So this is what I should be doing in the lab report. So do the plot. I think this is a very simple way to um, to tell yourself and convince yourself and also the reader of um, immediately you know that uh, is it gonna buckle? Is it uh, is it uh, theoretically we predicted to buckle or um, yield? So this is like the quickest way to get the whole picture. So when you put it in, in a table, right? Once you calculate the STR, and you calculate the respective S of the sample, if it falls on the left hand side of this region, then we say predicted failure mode yielding. And then if it's on the right right hand side of STR and we predict it to be buckled and then we confirm it our observation true true or not and the error is basically what's the the difference here 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 so difference between the measured and the theoretical critical stress makes sense so let me do a really quick example so then I still have time so this is basically what what I expect in the lab report on top of the table. Make sense? So let's do a quick example of long aluminum. So so the area is three point one ten power five I is just pi r not four over four that gives seven point four nine times ten power of negative eleven power four and power four and the s that I calculate for um, long aluminum that we use is one eighty six point six so is the dimensionless value. 
Oops. Okay. So now I can also calculate the sigma critical using equation uh, 2.6 and that gives us 78 and 2 3 megapascal okay. so there's two ways to identify if um, it's buckling or not one is looking at uh, one is by looking at the critical stress and that one's looking at the standardness s value so for example sigma yield of aluminum is 276 MPA so what's immediately obvious is sigma critical for our long aluminum column is smaller than sigma yield so if you look at here if your sigma critical is below the sigma yield it, it definitely falls in that region, right? Agree? So that's one one way to, to tell. So it's say buckle. And then another way is you find this transition uh, S for this material because the tr transition S only depends on the material constant and the boundary condition plus str depends on e sigma y and k so the k is depending on what boundary condition we're imposing to our column so the str for our case for um, long aluminum fixed fixed boundary condition is 99.35 Wait, no. Yeah, it is 99.35. Yeah. There's no dimension. And our S here, this is the S of a column, is much bigger than STR. That's the second indication. Right? So if you look at here, our S is on the right side of STR according to this um, sigma critical to centerness plot. So immediately this is the two ways we can tell where we theoretic we predicting the long column sorry the, the vertical column is going to buckle or yielding theoretically. Okay. So yeah, that's it. And you do similar steps for the other sample and material. Yep. Question. For in the actual lab, they all eventually buckled. But so say the short yeah. rod yielded before buckling. How would we know that from observation? So Since they all buckled in the end. Or like yeah, the end it's hard to tell until like let's say maybe possibly for. The S short for yeah. aluminum. Say, so assuming it was. It, like, let's say everything side. is all on the, the other side, then yes, yeah. yeah but I mean, say, yeah. say, assuming it falls on the yielding side. Okay. And we didn't necessarily observe it yielding before buckling. Um, you can just. Sorry, can you repeat your question? Like, you say that. So, you have your yeah. columns for your huh. observed. So yeah, like your predicted failure mode and your observed failure mode. Yeah. And I'm assuming the observed is what we saw. Yeah, 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 yeah. So those are all going to be buckling. They all Most of the case, actually, yeah, except for the steel, the short steel. The short steel doesn't really buckle. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it'd be it'd be interesting. Maybe that the S short for steel is like very close to. Um, STR and the uh, critical stress is very close. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is your effective length the uh, supported 
Oh, okay, yeah, um, good point. So, effective flip is basically so it comes from this equation actually. So, K, KL here is L effective. So the thing is, it's modified in such a way. KL is there, so we just end up using this because stress is a much meaningful value. But we can use, we can also plot. It's really up to you. You can plot this P against S as well. Yeah. In this case, I use sigma critical because I want to compare my yield stress, right? Because yield stress is in um, stress units, not load units. Make sense? Okay. Yeah. Other questions? Alright, so just like Alright. Thanks guys.